Um, our next presenter here is going to be Scott Noons, and it looks like he has already taken over the screen. So Scott, go ahead. Hey, thanks everyone. And by the way, if you ever need any ed tech help or digitizing help, please reach out. I'm Scott Noons, your neighborhood friendly ed tech coach, to borrow a line from Mr. Matthew Ketchum, our great uh, former ed tech coach. I'm an ELA teacher turned tech coach just this year. And so I'm sharing out some student stories from when I was in the classroom over the last few years. So without further ado, I'm gonna get right into it. I have some great things lined up for you. And we're gonna talk about coding, PBL, which is project-based learning and game design. So here we go, I'm going to discuss my three principles of design, explore, ideate and construct. So here are some student examples. We have a bunch in the top left. We have a Romeo and Juliet shoots and ladder style game. And I'm gonna talk about where I, I got some of these concepts and gameplays from, but this is a novel review project, uh, a fourth quarter project uh, for all my students, freshmen and sophomores. I was at Enox last year as an ELA teacher. And then we have the Hunger Games and we have a spin on Monopoly, Panamopoly. And all of this is content that was created in or for the classroom. And I was blessed to be able to uh, have some 3D printers and uh, get permission to bring them into the classroom. And students were able to uh, design or make or have me make custom parts. So those hearts you see in those hexagon shapes, uh, those are all part of it. If you want to see a little bit more how a game is played out in the bottom right hand corner when you do get access to this, there's a link to a student presentation for that game you're seeing in the bottom right hand corner. And then I also gave students the option to create their own game in Minecraft. And so this is a question review game. This is about when it was 80% uh, of the way through the student group added question boards later where it was a uh, Q&A style. So as they're going down this roller coaster, they would stop, uh, see these signposts on the edge, and then be able to do a question and answer uh, to see if they got the questions right throughout the novel. And they would kind of walk through or actually ride through different parts of the novel. So that was so cool. I really enjoyed that. And the students are the ones that really conceptualize this. All I did was give them an opportunity. And I think it, that's key. And this group, these were all struggling students in this particular group for Minecraft. They had D's and F's in all of their classes minus graphic design. <laughs> they had A's in that one. And I think that just goes to show if you're able to tap into student interests, they'll they'll meet you and they'll find a way to access and work with the material if you're able to present it in an interesting way. So, uh, you know, to borrow a little bit from presentations earlier, uh, don't be afraid to think outside the box. And Whenever I'm doing something, I try to provide where I got stuff, research. So I have research here. Uh, definitely explore that on your own time. There's a lot of research backing game design, especially for education. And there's a way to do it that gets students engaged and it's not buying all those education games. These resources are free. You can recycle or upcycle materials. You can use what you have around the house. And usually what I do throughout the year is I collect cardboard, little toys that my kids aren't using or not taking care of and I repurpose them. And then I ask students to do the same as well. And so they, they know about that. And that's how we were able to get a lot of our game boards, game pieces, and then I open up, um, you know, the opportunity for them to uh, create their own. And I actually want to show you one of those sites where they created their own. So as part of that, they had to go to Jonathan Spikes, GameStorm EDU. He's now a professor over in Wisconsin. 
the name of the university is escaping me right now, but he's in higher ed. But when he was an ELA teacher like myself, he came up with this. I think this was part of his master's thesis, if I'm not mistaken. And he has all these simple to use uh, game elements. So I'm going to just quickly go through these. So he has how to create a game and all of the basic parts that go into there. So my students had to do research for their game design project. And they had to go through these design thinking steps like creating a, a prototype. We got to play games in class and they wrote instructions. They talked about it. They kept logs. So I'm meeting all of my ELA Common Core State Standards along the way, but really taking it to the next level with the four C's. We had collaboration, creativity, they're constructing. Um, and they're communicating, communicating with me, communicating with each other. I had many built-in feedback loops for them so that nobody's getting lost along the way and they're not getting to the finish line to receive a poor grade and get there unknowingly. Uh, they have to produce something all along the way and then I'm giving them feedback. Their peers are giving them feedback against rubrics, and it's very specific feedback uh, to help the learner. And it gives you all these different game types. So in their reports, if you look at that presentation that I linked to a couple slides ago, uh, they have to identify what their game type is. And you can see Jonathan Spike has already let you know how it ties into science, ELA, and math. So this is a STEM or STEAM-based format. And you can use this for foreign language, PE. You can make your own PE games. Uh, that's how we get things like pickleball. They have a set of game libraries that users and teachers have uploaded. They're really cool. This Codenames one is one of my favorites, as well as this Battle Royale. It's like uh, Mike Tyson's Knockout. And this is one of my favorite areas. I had some students go crazy with this Game Boards Maker site and Game Card Template. Those are really cool. And there's so many other things like making your own dice. Um, really, if you can dream it or if they can dream it and you allow them to do it, they are going to follow through and uh, meet you uh, right where you're at. Sorry, I totally hit the wrong thing, guys. I'm going to just keep talking as I wait for that to refresh. I was trying to get it to present from my slide I left off on. Um, the next thing I'm going to go into is coding. Coding isn't just for boys. It's not just for older kids. So I did mention I taught at the secondary level, but I tested this stuff on my kiddos at home as well. So uh, keep that in mind as you're, you're looking at these things. Uh, it really can be for any grade level. And for the slide to catch up here. Okay, and so going into coding, I highly recommend you start small and go outside of computer science, bring it into your content area and I have a bunch of different games here. I'll showcase a couple and then I'll, I'll move on. So uh, here's one where students have to uh, move. You can see when I hit left and right, uh, character moves. Okay, so it's like a Mario style game and students created these uh, really quick in about a half hour. So we practiced a little bit. We followed the PSYOP method. I do, we do, you do. Uh, here's a really simple one with the maze. You have to exit and it lets you know you win. And think about design thinking. Uh, what's really neat about this is students may not get it right. They may not get it right the first time, look at this character. They're able to go through walls. So this is a non-example. No matter where they go on this, they automatically win. Uh, if they hit this wall, it's supposed to be just this little spot here on the left. And here's an example 
and you'll see a visual of it a little bit later. Uh, let's refresh this. This is one uh, that my 10 year old did. And so uh, this is modeled after Galaga. I'm trying to remember how do I shoot? There we go. So it's able to shoot, shoot these little missiles. It's pretty cool. Uh, so really any age uh, can do this right here. And then I wanted to, we're going to go over on time, huh, Alex? I can skip this yeah, video. I'm just, just going to pop in and let you know you've, because I want to make sure Steve has enough time. Yeah, to I'll, I'll, I'll go. I'll that. finish up. So uh, I recommend going back, watching that video to see how he uh, explores with Bloxels. Here's some research for coding. And PBL is something I'm super passionate about. Uh, I definitely write prompts and rubrics to guide the students through their project-based learning assignments. I give them some ideas if they're stuck. I have a podcast example tying in with what Greg was saying. Uh, that's, that's great. And I have to share a couple student stories real quick. This student raised $922 for teacher care packages. You can see all the care packages. Um, more links and details are in this presentation here. And I had another student that had all Ds and Fs, but for my class, she created her own side business in six weeks, sold 60 hoodies and 30 t-shirts and raised over $2,600 and donated all of those funds to uh, the Ronald McDonald House and like organizations uh, for families that have children with cancer so they can stay there, have them reach out to community members. Community is huge. These last examples are uh, female students that have gone in and coded so girls can code too. And she submitted this Google option. And this uh, link here showcases how she did it uh, as well as this video. Another student coded a video game for To Kill a Mockingbird, and here are some of her resources. And next up, we have Steve. If you have any questions or comments, let me know. I'll gladly help out.